ochtend. Oh yes! Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Come on, celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Somebody celebrate with me this morning. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Yo danzo, yo 
Halleluja, wat een geweldige tijd. Amen, zijn we in. We gaan naar ons nieuwe gebouw. Er gebeuren zoveel geweldige Amen. dingen. Er zijn teachings. Oh my God, zoveel dingen gebeuren. Vader, we danken u voor deze ochtend, Abba Vader. Vader, we danken u voor wat u aan het doen bent, Heer, in deze gemeente. Vader, ik dank u wel dat u een ieder vandaag, Vader mijn God, zal aanraken door uw woord, Vader. Uw aanwezigheid maakt het verschil. Abba Vader, we onderwerpen ons aan u om naar u te luisteren, om naar u te kijken, Abba Vader. Want om u draait alles. Jezus, u bent Heer en Verlosser. Ik ben slechts uw microfoon en u bent de spreker. Heilige Geest, Ga uw gang en doe wat u moet doen. In Jezus machtige naam bidden met dankzegging. En het volk van God zegt amen. Halleluja. Wie weet waar we het vorige week tijdens de Time of Rema over hebben gehad? Wie weet het nog? He? Wat was het ook alweer? Laat me... Wat is dit? Ja. En wat is dit? We gaan even een korte ronde, vragenronde doen. Jude Pester, ik ga ervan uit dat jij het wel weet. Ik weet dat jij het weet, want God had je een openbaring gegeven. Ik weet niet of je het nog weet van vorige week. Waar ging het vorige week over? Wat heb je eruit geleerd? Kom. Nou, ik heb echt geleerd... Kom naar zeg voren. Maar, nou, wat ik echt heb geleerd van de dienst van vorige week... maar dat is me ook echt bijgebleven gebleven voor mij, hè... is dat you have to associate, you have to join. Als je al je niet... You are joining, kan je niet gevormd worden. Dus het gaat in processen, zeg maar. You are joining, en dan word je gevormd naar Christus. Amen. Dat is wat ik echt, zeg maar, eruit heb gehaald. Ik Amen. Weet niet, uh, Powerful. Dat is mij gebleven. En ik dacht toen, ik moet meer met de man van God omgaan, want ik wil echt veranderen. Kijk, yeah. dat is mooi. Maar je bent een getuigenis van de joining en de vorming. <laughs> Waarom denk je dat je anders teens en youth pastor bent? Oh, want hoe volg jij mama? Met je volgt alles, mama ja, zoals ze Christus zoals volgt. Christus volg, ja. Amen. Jou wil ik hebben. <laughs> This man is selected and approved. <laughs> Amen. Wat heb jij geleerd uit de les? Kom, kom, laat, kom voorstaan, zodat mensen je goed kunnen zien. Kom staan. Yes. Tell me. Nou, wat ik heb geleerd is um, dat het woord metamorfo bestaat uit twee dingen. Dat is meta en morfo. Joining en de vorming. En wat Jude Pastor net zei, je moet eerst joinen om gevormd te kunnen worden. Dus wie, met wie je omgaat, de mensen die je ziet, de mensen met wie je uh, dagelijks contact hebt, die zijn um, heel belangrijk om uiteindelijk gevormd te worden. Want als je niet, als je zelf niet joint met de juiste mensen, dan vorm je jezelf naar 
iets wat geen Christus is. Daarnaast hebben we geleerd dat het vormen is ook een proces. En Paul zei in Galaten 4 vers 19 dat hij eigenlijk bidt dat de mensen gevormd worden. Waarom? Ze werden al gejoined. Dus op het moment dat iemand naar de uh, kerk komt, diegene is op dat moment al gejoined. Maar waar wij voor moeten bidden is dat diegene gevormd wordt naar het evenbeeld van Christus. Dit is precies waarom ik hem nu wil naar voren riep. Amen. Kijk, en dit is het geheim ook van zijn leven. Hè? Ik heb... Um... Het, papa heeft het eigenlijk heel mooi uitgelegd. Dat je wel gejoined kunt zijn, maar dat betekent nog niet dat je gevormd bent. En daarom zie je dus bepaalde dingen nog terug in je leven. Amen. En we, we lezen hier, dat was eigenlijk de grondtekst van vorige week in Matthäus 17 vers 2. En hij werd voor hun ogen van gedaante veranderd. Zijn gezicht straalde als de zon en zijn kleren werden wit als licht. En referent heeft toen de tas van Sarai gepakt om te laten zien dat het licht dus eigenlijk... Eigenlijk, Gods geest reflecteerde het weer kaatste door het omhulsel heen. Maar de mensen die met hem waren, zijn apostelen, die waren heel in, in het natuurlijke. Zo kunnen we ook vaak zijn en naar de dienst komen en natuurlijk dingen bekijken. Terwijl we hier zijn om te lijken op het origineel. Je bent niet wat ik hier nu met mijn vijf zintuigen zie, maar Christus woont in jou nu. En nu moet je dus je niet alleen joinen dat je gevoegd bent met hem, maar je moet ook gevormd worden door hem. Je moet gelijkvormig worden, amen. En een van de manieren hoe gelijkvormig te worden, is door goed naar de dienst te luisteren en aandachtig te zijn en je eraan over te geven, amen. Ik wil dat we naar Psalm 119 gaan, vers 130. Want je kunt niet op iets lijken waar je geen omgang mee hebt. Dus misschien moet je jezelf wel afvragen van... waarom zie ik bepaalde bovennatuurlijke resultaten in mijn karakter niet terug? Dat is omdat je geen omgang hebt met degene waardoor je gevormd moet worden. Amen. We lezen eigenlijk al vanaf Genesis, lezen we al dat we onder leiding moesten komen. Amen. In Genesis lezen we dat God de mens vormde en hem schiep en blies in hem en de mens werd tot een levende ziel. De mens was nu gemaakt om te leven van de woorden die God had gesproken. Dus als je kon leven door wat God sprak, dan had je God dus nodig. Amen. Het moment dat de zondeval kwam, werd de mens nu afgesneden van God... En kon de mens nu niet meer volgen, want het leefde nu door zijn vijf zintuigen. Amen. Maar oorspronkelijk was de mens geschapen om geleid te worden door zijn maker. Dus de reden waarom wij ons vaak niet voegen of laten we vormen, is omdat we gewend zijn om door onze vijf zintuigen te functioneren. En niet onder de leiding van Gods geest, maar onder de leiding van jezelf. Dus de reden waarom we ons vaak niet voegen bij mensen die een toevoeging in ons leven hebben, om één te kunnen worden met Christus en op het origineel te kunnen lijken, is omdat we gewend zijn en gewend willen blijven om op onszelf te leunen. Amen. En ik wil Sharon als voorbeeld nemen. Ik heb er al gevraagd, dus misschien dat iemand anders camera even kan overnemen. Want Sharon is een heel mooi voorbeeld hiervan. En Sharon uh, kwam bij ons en uh, nou, laten we zeggen, ze kwam hier in de kerk en uh, papa die uh, vertelde dus dat ze bij ons kon komen wonen. Ze was toen 19 jaar oud en um, Sharon kwam van een achtergrond, een hele heftige achtergrond. Um, Sharon kwam uit een omgeving waar eigenlijk de straat, criminaliteit, prostitutie, verslaving haar opvoeding was. En Sharon was zo depressief dat ze bijna zelfmoord had gepleegd. En op het moment dat ze hier terecht kwam en haar leven aan Jezus geven, gaf, gebeurde er iets. Ze werd overgeplaatst door God. Ze werd allereerst in het lichaam van Christus gestopt. Want dat is iets wat de Heilige Geest kan doen. Kijk, je kan het hier zien. Kijk hoe ze er voorheen uitzag. En Sharon kwam bij ons wonen. Kijk, dit was Sharon toen ik haar ontmoette. En kijk Sharon nu. En toen Sharon, toen Sharon bij ons kwam wonen, was het niet makkelijk. Maar wat moest jij doen om verandering te krijgen? Ik moest mezelf echt overgeven aan het proces. Uh, ik had echt nog te maken met mindset, uh, van afwijzing, maar ook uh, een laag zelfbeeld, et cetera. 
En ik moest me echt overgeven aan het proces. Ik moest me vernieuwen met het woord van God. Ja, echt me overgeven eigenlijk. En Sharon moest daarvoor een keuze te maken, uh, maken. Ze moest de keuze maken. Welke keuze moest je maken? Ik moest me een keuze maken om het verleden achter me te laten. Dus ik moest echt ervoor kiezen om niet meer met dezelfde mensen om te gaan waar ik vroeger mee omging. Om bepaalde dingen los te laten, verslavingen en echt achter Jezus aan te gaan. Uh, ik moest het oude eigenlijk achter me laten. En wat zijn de stappen om het oude los uh, te laten? Wat heb je moeten doen? Hoe heb je het, uh, het oude kunnen loslaten? Wat waren de stappen die je daarvoor hebt genomen? Ik heb eerst mijn leven aan Jezus gegeven en hem geaccepteerd als mijn Heer en Verlosser. En daarna heb ik me echt moeten overgeven aan het proces. Uh, ik heb mezelf moeten vernieuwen met het woord van God. Want ik dacht altijd dat ik nog het oude was, maar dat was niet zo. De Bijbel zegt dat wanneer je in Christus bent, dat je een nieuwe schepping bent. En daar moest ik me echt aan overgeven. Mediteren op het woord van God. Amen. En toen je bij ons kwam, luisterde je toen meteen naar alles? Nee, zeker niet. En als ik wat zei, wat gebeurde er dan? Ik uh, voelde me heel erg afgewezen. Uh, ik had ook heel erg te maken met belediging, maar ook woede. <laughs> Uh, omdat ik nog een oud plaatje had. Ik dacht nog dat ik dat was. Dus als er een gevoel oppopte, dan ging ik reageren op mijn gevoel in plaats van dat ik op het woord reageerde. Deden wij lelijk tegen jou? Nee. <laughs> Oké. Okay. Nou, dit is dus wat er gebeurt bij mensen die dus in het lichaam van Christus gestopt worden. Um, als je onder de verkeerde leer bent, dan word je geleerd om nog steeds op je eigen kunnen door te gaan. Maar je bent niet gemaakt om op je eigen kunnen te kunnen functioneren. Je kan nooit gevormd worden zonder degene die jou vormt. Allereerst, de Bijbel zegt, volg mij zoals ik Christus volg. Amen. Dus je hebt iemand nodig die Christus volgt om ook Christus te kunnen volgen. Want je hebt iemand hier op aarde nodig om fysiek je voorbeeld te kunnen zijn om te kunnen volgen. Amen. Toen Sharon binnenkwam, toen was ze eigenlijk een blanco papiertje als nieuwe baby in Christus. En nu moest ze leren wat het was om een nieuwe natuur te hebben. Maar haar oude natuur, dus de oude manier van denken en doen, was gewend om te functioneren vanuit eigen kunnen. Dat betekent dus dat als ik tegen Sharon zei, Sharon, ik wil dat je vandaag de afwas doet, dat Sharon zoiets had van, ik ben moe, ik heb geen zin en hoezo moet ik de afwas doen? Dat waren de dingen die in haar oppopten. Wat was het woord dat je kreeg toen je zeg maar dingen moest doen in huis? Had je een bijbeltekst gekregen, weet je nog wat dat was? Ja, dat ik alles uh, aan de Heer moet doen en niet aan de mens. Amen. Dat was Colossense 3 vers 23. We doen alles aan de Heer en niet aan de mens. Ze moest eerst leren dat de instructies die ze kreeg, dat die waren om Christus te kunnen volgen. En niet een mens. Zij moest ons niet volgen, maar ze moest Jezus in ons volgen. Oké, okay, dat was het begin van het vormingsproces. Sharon was niet in één keer heel gehoorzaam. Sterker nog, heel vaak gaf ze een brutale mond, was ze niet aardig, terwijl ik had er niet in huis hoeven te nemen. En dat zijn de dingen, we hebben het gehad over het lijden en dan de heerlijkheid. Kun je de heerlijkheid op Sharon's leven zien? Amen. Dus we lijden met mensen mee om de heerlijkheid te kunnen zien op hun. Amen. En soms, als mensen, gaan andere mensen om ons heen door een proces heen. Ze worden gevoegd en gevormd. En vaak hebben we het geduld niet om het vormingsproces toe te staan. Dat wij ook geholpen worden om een ander te kunnen vormen. Maar ook dat iemand tot de ontwikkeling komt als baby in Christus. Amen. En dit is heel belangrijk, want als je je daar niet aan overgeeft... Kijk, we kunnen zeggen wat we willen. Sharon was in het begin heel passief. Ik weet nog dat ik was... Uh, ik had mijn auto geparkeerd en Sharon zat in de auto... en iemand botste gewoon tegen mijn auto op. Kijk, en ik ben agressief getraind door mijn vader. Dan, heb je, dan stap ik uit en dan ga je betalen. Of je gaat iets doen, maar je gaat niet zomaar mijn auto kunnen botsen. Sharon die bleef gewoon achterin zitten. Ik kom terug van boodschappen doen. Ik zeg, wat is hier gebeurd? Ja, er is iemand op de auto gebotst... Oké, okay, mijn hart werd sowieso al gevormd hierin, mijn ziel, alles. Want ik bedoel, het beest kwam natuurlijk naar boven in mij. Ik wilde er gelijk een pak slaag geven van hoe kun je nou zorgen dat iemand hè, op mijn auto botst en jij zegt niks. Dus dat was mijn test. Ik werd gevormd. Amen. Ik moest namelijk op mijn vader lijken. En mijn vader, referent Dr. Champier, is heel geduldig. En hij heeft altijd wijsheid in elke situatie. Dus ik moest gaan nadenken, oké, okay, wat is het nu de informatie die ik overbreng naar mijn dochter? De informatie die ik geleerd had van mijn vader. Zoals hij Christus volgde. Amen. Dus ik moest gaan denken van, oké, okay, hoe zou mijn vader in deze situatie reageren? Dat was mijn vormingsproces, want papa voedde mij altijd op om een ander te kunnen opvoeden. Dus 
ik, als ik op haar reageerde, dan reageerde papa altijd op mij. Van heb je dit zo gedaan, heb je dat zo gedaan, heb je dat zo gedaan. Zie je hier het vormingsproces dat Christus op die manier gevormd wordt in ons. Dat we tot het origineel komen. Zoals God eigenlijk manifesteert door een mens. Ah fijn. Dus uh, Sharon zei niks. En toen zei ik tegen Sharon, ik zeg, Sharon, je kunt niet zomaar over je heen laten lopen. Wij horen dat niet te tolereren, maar ze was dat helemaal niet gewend. Sharon was zo passief dat we op een gegeven moment zelfs begonnen te denken dat ze een verstandelijke beperking had. Maar Sharon had geen verstandelijke beperking. Het woord moest groeien in Sharon. En Sharon moest gevormd worden. Amen. Op een dag moest Sharon prediken. En iedereen dacht van, hè? Wauw. Waar ging die prediking ook alweer over? Over het zaadje en die baarmoeder. Kan je dat vertellen? Oh, dat was mooi. Het ging over een zaadje. Het ging over het woord van God. Dat het woord van God geplant moet zijn. En dat het een zaadje geeft. En wanneer het zaadje groeit, dat je het water, dan groeit het zeg maar in je leven. En het ging over het woord van God. Het ging over jou. Ja. Dus ze predikte, maar eigenlijk predikte ze het proces wat de Heilige Geest in haar aan het doen was. En vandaag de dag is Sharon, nou misschien kan je vertellen over hoe je binnenkwam op niveau 1. En vertel ja. waar je nu staat. Amen. Uh, nou, voordat ik in Christus kwam, ging ik niet meer naar school. Uh, ik had een niveau 1 diploma. Ik had helemaal geen motivatie meer om naar school te gaan. Ik werkte ook niet, dus ik had schulden. Ik uh, deed eigenlijk helemaal niks. Ik was echt passief. Ik uh, rookte alleen maar wiet. Ik zat op mijn kamer. Uiteindelijk wou ik ook niet meer naar buiten gaan, et cetera. Dus ik was echt, ik was gewoon dood van binnen. En um, het moment dat ik in de kerk kwam um, en ik mijn leven gaf aan Jezus, uh, de man van God zei tegen mij van, waarom ga je niet terug naar school? Nou, ik was nog best wel koppig, dus ik dacht, nee, ik ga niet Stop. terug naar school. Hij, zo, hij zei tegen haar, gaf haar een instructie en ik wil dat jullie dit goed aandachtig luisteren, want we hebben het over het voegen en het vormen. Kijk, ze moest allereerst haar familie achter haar laten. Sharon komt helemaal uit Groningen, hè? En ze was 19 jaar. En als 19-jarig meisje moest ze heel haar familie laten. Al haar vrienden. En zich helemaal losmaken van dat wat ze kende. Toen kwam de instructie dat ze weer terug naar school moest. Met wat zij wist en wat zij had geleerd... had ze sowieso al niet het geloof om te kunnen slagen. Maar ze deed het. Dat is één. Hoe vaak krijgen wij geen instructie... en denken we al zelf dat het niet werkt? Maar kijk wat het resultaat is. Praat verder. Ja, uiteindelijk heb ik me dus overgegeven aan de instructie. Uh, ben ik terug naar school gegaan. Um, en ik ben begonnen op niveau 2. Ik moest me trots ook aan de zijkant zetten. Want ik wou niet beginnen op niveau 2. Ik vond het laag. Uh, de mensen waar ik mee vroeger omging, hadden niveau 4, et cetera. Dus ik moest me trots aan de kant zetten. En ik ben begonnen op niveau 2. Um, uiteindelijk uh, wou ik toch heel snel naar niveau 4. Ik wist nog dat er een zuster in de kerk was, dus Leila. En die zei, ja, we gaan het op het altaar zetten. En toen hebben we dat gedaan en toen mocht ik binnen een half jaar naar niveau 4 doorstromen. Oké, okay. maar tijdens dat proces kwam Sharon op een school terecht als meisje uit Groningen. Oké, okay? kijk waar ze dan mee te maken krijgt. Ze krijgt te maken met intimidatie op school, want ze is een christen. Ik weet nog dat Sharon op een dag belde ze me op en ze had gevochten. Wat gebeurde er op dat moment en wat heeft de Heilige Geest op dat moment met jou gedaan? Nou, het was echt, het was sowieso raar, het was sowieso een aanval, want ik volg nooit vroeger... Dus ja, misschien met mijn zusje of zo, maar nooit op school of zo. Dus het moment dat ik zeg maar door die proces heen ging, uh, vocht ik. Um, en toen zag ik ook van ja, ik heb een fout gedaan, uh, gemaakt. Uiteindelijk heb ik het uh, beleden aan de, de pastors. Ik voelde me ook echt schuldig. Uh, en toen dacht ik van oké, okay, dit is niet hoe we als christenen met uh, mensen omgaan vanuit de wereld. Ik had beter moeten weten. Uiteindelijk ben ik naar dat meisje toegegaan, heb ik mijn excuses aangeboden. En God is me echt genade geweest, want ik had ook geschorst kunnen worden. Maar uh, dat hebben ze niet gedaan. Ik moet gewoon doorgaan met mijn opleiding. Ik heb mijn excuus aangeboden aan dat meisje en het was weer goed. Maar kijk wat een andere omgeving en het voegen bij de juiste mensen met haar deed. Oké, okay, ze, ze heeft nu niveau 4 gedaan, maar wat doe je nu dan? Vertel wat ik, er daarna is gebeurd. Uh, ja, ik mocht uh, uiteindelijk ook nog uh, doorstromen naar HBO. En uh, mijn docent was... Van de MBO zei nog tegen mij, ja, maar vind je het niet allemaal te snel gaan en zo? En ik was, nee, dit is niet te snel. <laughs> ja. Dus ik zei van, nee. En uh, nou, de docent van de andere school zei van, ja, je mag echt doorstromen en zo. En toen mocht ik ook nog een half jaar overslaan. En nu zit ik op het HBO, doe ik uh, communicatie en creative business. Oké, okay, kan jij deze mensen vertellen, wat is het geheim van het resultaat dat je hebt gehoord? Was dat hard werken? Nee, zeker niet. Ik heb wat echt, was het wel dan? Het was echt overgeven aan de Heilige Geest, overgeven aan instructies. Uh, voor mij was het echt de openbaring die ik heb gekregen, want ik wou eerst iets met kinderen doen. 
En de man van God zei, uh, waarom iets met kinderen? En ik was, ja, ik was koppig. En ik zei, nee, ik wil echt iets met kinderen doen. Uiteindelijk uh, zei Rembrandt van, oké, okay, laat hem maar twee weken of zo met de kinderen zijn. En uh, ik was twee weken met de kinderen. Uiteindelijk wou ik hou van kinderen, maar ik wou niks meer met kinderen doen. <laughs> en Rembrandt zei, ja, waarom schrijf je niet in voor administratie? Ik dacht van, nee, ik zie mezelf daar helemaal niet. Ik heb daar ook nooit aan gedacht. En uh, nou, uiteindelijk ging ik toch kijken naar administratie. dacht ik, oké, okay, ik ga me daarvoor aanmelden. Maar ik mocht echt, ja, ik heb echt gezien dat echt luisteren naar de instructie. Want ik denk dat als ik iets met kinderen had gedaan, dat ik nooit zo snel was doorgestroomd naar HBO. Amen. Er zijn hier verschillende ingrediënten die ze heeft gevolgd. Het was niet door keihard werken, maar het was door instructie volgen. Ze moest haar eigen verstand opzij zetten. En dat is een keuze, hè. Dat is iets wat niet iemand voor je kan doen. We kunnen hier allemaal kijken naar onszelf in deze les. Of we allemaal wel doen wat God van ons gevraagd heeft. Als je werkelijk bovennatuurlijk resultaat wil hebben, Isabella, dan moet je willen groeien. En groeien is een keus. Want iedereen krijgt dezelfde kans van God om te groeien. Maar het zijn de excuses die je maakt voor jezelf. En hoe je je openstelt, hoe je ontwikkeling zal gaan. Het moet niet ineens zijn dat je aangewakkerd wordt door iets leuks wat gebeurt dat je nu God beter zal dienen. Ze heeft de keuzes in pijn gemaakt. Zij was zo, voelde zich zo laag van haarzelf dat ik soms met haar voor de spiegel moest staan. En zei, kijk eens wie dit is. Dit is een vrouw van God. Kijk wie je bent. En ik moest ze naar het woord laten kijken. Er zijn zoveel momenten dat ze het opgaf. Sharon had last van ongesteldheid, zo pijn. Zo erg dat ze op de grond aan het overgeven was. Maar Sharon had zoiets van, ik ga geen aspirine innemen. Ik weet dat ik in een huis van genezing leef. Dus ik ga volgen wat het woord van God zegt. En kijk, haar leven is een leven van sprongen. Want als je kijkt hoe ze klasse is geskipt, zo is ze ook in haar bediening geskipt. Ze is van achter begonnen als schoonmaakster. Amen. En ze maakt nog steeds schoon. En dat zal niet veranderen, want ze weet dat ze dat aan de heren doet. En dat het een hele belangrijke taak is in het koninkrijk. Ze is van achter naar voren geplaatst. Dat pas geleden nog de man van God tegen de zei dat ze deel van het secretariaat is. Mijn vader doet dat niet tenzij de heren dat doet. Er is niemand die omreferend heen is uit zijn eigen keuze. Anders was ik daar niet geweest. Ik was de meest rebelse persoon. En ik moet eerlijk zeggen, zij luisterde sneller als dat ik heb geluisterd. Ik heb veel langer gedaan over het luisteren. En daarom is het zo belangrijk dat als je hier in de dienst zit en je krijgt profetische instructies, dat je ze opvolgt. Dat je begrijpt dat het niet een mens is die tot je spreekt, maar dat God is tot je spreekt. Kijk, wij zijn allemaal gewend in onze oude natuur om in een oude omgeving te zijn. Maar het is geen excuus dat we verkracht zijn geweest. Het is geen excuus dat we mishandeld zijn geweest. Het is geen excuus dat de wereld je misbruikt heeft. Het is geen excuus dat je uit een arm gezin komt. Het is geen excuus dat je verslaafd wordt. Want God heeft iedereen de mogelijkheid gegeven om gelijkvormig te worden. En zij had helemaal niks voor haar wat voor haar werkte om het geweldig te maken. Zij voelde zich niet geweldig. Zij voelde zich niet superieur. Zij had geen openbaring. Ze wist alleen maar één ding, dat ze moest volgen. En dat simpele stukje van volgen heeft haar gemaakt tot de vrouw die ze nu is. Ik wil dat we vandaag dat we ons gaan afvragen of we God wel echt volgen zoals het moet. Of dat we eigenlijk nog onze oude ik volgen. Of dat we eigenlijk nog onze eigen methodes volgen. Of dat we eigenlijk misschien nog niet gevoegd zijn omdat vandaag is evaluatiedag. Vandaag moet je de evaluatie opmaken. Ik durfde niet eens mensen hier te vragen in de ruimte wat ze van het woord hadden opgestoken. Want van heel veel van jullie weet ik gewoon dat jullie niet mediteren op het woord. En dat is ook precies waarom er geen transformatie is. Omdat je blijft hangen in wat je denkt voelt. En je blijft omgaan met je oude familieleden. Je blijft naar je oude familiefeestjes gaan. Je blijft met je oude vrienden omgaan. Je blijft in je oude manier van denken. En als je in je oude omgeving blijft, zal je nooit een nieuw plaatje hebben. Want je oude omgeving gaat je niet het nieuwe plaatje geven, maar het huidige plaatje. En je wil niet in het huidige plaatje blijven, want je leven is bedoeld om van heerlijkheid tot heerlijkheid te gaan en van kracht tot kracht. Amen. En daar wil ik het bij laten. We gaan ons op dit moment bekeren naar de heren. En we gaan, we gaan sorry zeggen tegen de heilige geest. Waar we zijn vormingsproces niet hebben toegestaan. Waar we niet wilden vergeten wat we wisten. Om 
getransformeerd te worden en gevormd te worden door de Heilige Geest. Dit was mijn woord van bemoediging. Je mag plaatsnemen. Halleluja. En als jullie hebben bekeerd, laten we de Heilige Geest uitnodigen om je te helpen in deze tijdens deze dienst. Om te zien wat Hij wil dat u ziet. Amen. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Yes, come on. Jullie mogen gaan staan. Holy, 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 holy ghost, come and take control. Holy, 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 holy ghost, come and take control. Holy ghost, holy, 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 holy ghost, come and take, come and take control.
Hallelujah. Somebody take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Sorry. Let's do some small work this morning in the afternoon. We're going to have a very explosive time. I've been moving from one thing to another. That's why I'm dressed like this. Hallelujah. I've been moving from one place to another. Normally, I'm in a, how do they call it, teens and youth mode. But uh, and this mo this afternoon is going to be very exciting. Amen. But God will do something in our midst. I actually accept greetings from Prophet. Amen. He he said I should greet you all. Now they say. I believe there's a reason why we didn't see him yet. He doesn't believe this is our building, so he went to the building. So we, we are coming from the church building. That is where he went. And um, we spent some time there praying together. And he said, I should tell you, he loves you all. And actually, the building is done. Amen. There are some... Uh, how many of you believe in prophets? The Bible says, Believe in the Lord thy God, so shall ye be established. And believe in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Don't mind, if you look at my gene, you see some things on it. Don't worry, it is honey. We're doing some prophetic things. We're doing prophetic things, so don't mind all those things. And this afternoon, you can't miss it because there's something that we're going to do as a church. So I know that sometimes people come to church and they go home because they have a program. I'd rather wait for God than wait for man. Let me say it again. I say, I'd rather wait for God than wait for man. Sometimes, you rushing to go take care of your own stuff is always the problem in your life. It's the cause and the reason why you have a lot of problems is once a week or twice a week that you come to church. Somebody say, but the whole day I can't spend my time in church. When you sleep all night, who we'll take care of you? Who we'll gives you the air you breathe? So is it so, is it difficult to choose to come and spend time with your maker? A whole day, even if it was the whole day. That he says, come to church and stay in church. Then you are saying, I, lo I love what happened yesterday. There was this lady that was trying to tell a prophet. The prophet said, be in the service. The lady said, I have an appointment. He said, be in the service. The lady said, I have an appointment. I was just praying for the lady. I was praying for the lady. I was praying for the lady because that is how you can end your own life. And you are busy debating with a prophet. That is what happened. We were having this conference in a... One time there was a conference in a place and two ladies were walking out of the building. He called them back. And he told them, don't go to so-so and so place. I see that you died. They didn't listen to when they died. It's as simple as that. So some things we don't play with. Hallelujah. Test somebody pursuing Christ. 
Say pursuing Christ. Say pursuing Christ. Say pursuing Christ. So last time we had something very small and I want to touch that same thing. I was just sitting in my room. I was sitting on my bed, by the way, because I couldn't sleep, which I don't know why. I couldn't sleep in the night, so I had to force myself to read. I always read. I'm a, I'm a bookworm person, so I read. But I don't read any book. And by the way, I don't read books that the Lord did not tell me to read. I don't care who writes it. Like I don't listen to every preacher either. It's just my discipline. I don't care who preach. So I don't read a book because they say this author is famous. And everybody's talking about him. Because when I was in my 20s, the Lord taught me clearly that books are authors. So I don't expose myself to every strange author because I don't know why you wrote the book. And I don't also know the spirit that came to you before you write the book. Yes. Because your mind can be framed by one book and that book held you captive your whole life. By one book. Because you don't know that the world is too spiritual and anything can inspire you. Yes. Anything can inspire a writer. You can move on the street to see something and then you start to write about it. But the spirit behind it is what matters. If you want to know the power of books, watch people that are reading these love books and all those things, how they start to feel after that. Then you will understand that every time you are reading a book, you are being exposed to something. That's why people have some kind of strong mind that they themselves are praying for their own deliverance. So the simple things in life they can't understand. But who program them that way? An altar. I don't know how did I get here. This is not my message for today. By the way, go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. No, you see, some people are raised by God. And listen, not everybody, God, will come and teach them certain things. Some, you can only learn from the one that God taught. The Bible says something in the book of Acts. He says something about the church in Ephesus. They were born again, but they were still practicing magic. And those books that were, they were reading, Framed their mind, though they were Christians, until they saw power. Then the Bible says, they took the books. If I were you, I would have grown past this. You would have put the text. I am preaching scripturally, but you would have put it on the board. They burned the books. When they burned the books, they destroyed the author. As a result of that, they came loose. Some books are in your life that you have to burn. Yes. There are some things that, because you read them, the, the things have programmed your destiny. And the only way to be free from those things is to burn it. Not every knowledge you need. Not every knowledge. Not everything you have to know. Not everything you have to know. The Bible says many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them. It was found 50,000 those days. See how much they invest in books. Those days, 50,000 pieces of silver is a lot of money. If I want to convert it now, You are trapped by the things you read. And most people don't know that is the reason why they are trapped. Is somebody getting this? So let's do some small job this morning. Second Corinthians 3.18. But we all 
with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. Say metamorphose. metamorphose. Now, that word is divided into two. Meta and meta and meta and now. After. That word also means meta also means after. But you must know what happened before they put after. Is, is somebody getting this? For example. For example. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 4 verse 1 to 3. How many of you really want to change? You sure? How many of you want to walk in power? Are you sure? I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endure. What, is, what did the Bible say? Endeavoring to do what? So let's start reading it again. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness. So, that word wit in this, in this text means meta. It is meta in Greek. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, continue. And devouring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Move it. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Hallelujah. So, it's talking about here, they use the word, say wheat. Say wheat. I want you to go to Matthew 27, 53. That is too far for me. Just put John, John chapter 5. Verse 1 to 14, but my emphasis is on verse 14. I want to get somewhere. Yes. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up After to this, so you have to look what was after. Continue. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of important folk, of blind halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in. After the troubling of the water. So something happened before the miracle. I, 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 are you getting me? Something happened before the miracle. Meta is a preposition. It comes before the forming. So, if you want to see the miracle in your life, you must experience meta, the joining. There's somebody, they're joining. So, that one must take place first, before the forming. Now, I want to rush this service. I want to rush it. Sit down, let me just preach. Forget the book. The Bible says something in the book of First Kings, chapter 19. I was already preaching to my wife while we were quiet. The Bible says something. When Elijah was complaining that he is the only prophet after being threatened by Jezebel and he lost courage and he was fearful, the Bible says an angel came, empowered him, to strengthen him to continue the journey. Are you getting this? Then God gave Elijah an instruction. 
He gave the man. And what was the instruction? What? What did God say? When he was complaining, the Lord told him to go anoint Jehu. Put the text because I don't want to go there fast. Get there fast for me. Who is behind that thing today? I'm in First King 19 already. So move fast for me. Verse 14. Because if I'm waiting for you people who can stay here for a very long time. He said, I've been very jealous for the Lord of hosts because of the children of Israel have forsaken the co thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, Anoint Hazel to be king of Assyria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, that Nimshi shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel, Meholah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Now watch. Elisha was no prophet. Hear me. He was no prophet. He has no qualification of a prophet. He was, there would ever no scripture that he, he had dreams and visions. Elijah had prophets that he was training. Now I want you to follow. You see in the night, I was quiet. Then the Lord said, today I want to bring you somewhere else. I love to meditate, and I love his voice. I'm addicted to his voice. His voice is my food. When I start to hear God, when God starts to talk to me, food lose appetite. I can stay in that place for hours. I will not even know I've been there for hours. Now watch this thing. Look at this thing. The Bible says, he anointed somebody in his place, but he was alive. The question is, didn't God saw the other prophets? Was he not raising prophets? Why did he need another prophet? Because this prophet were joined, but they did not want to be formed. They were joined, but they did not want to be formed. And we have many people that join people, but they don't want to be formed. They don't love to be formed. So now watch this. What is formation? Because the word formation like how Galician says it. I say meta. I know that somebody's asking me, when did you study? Were you studying in the car? No. You must prepare your life for the next 10 years. You must also prepare your preaching. That anything can happen. Look at this. So, my little children whom I travel in bed again until Christ be more full in you. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? So, are we there? So, Second Kings, this Elijah that we are talking about already has prophets. This prophet.
prophets, they see visions. They could even tell Elisha that don't you know your master will be taken away from you. But the thing is, they didn't know the time. Because you can join and you pick some signals, but because you are not formed, you can miss many things. Now, this is a lay person that joined the man of God. So the question is, how was he formed? Let's walk through, through it. Let's walk through it. Second Kings. And the sons, put verse 1, please. Don't fast forward the tape. Very soon I'm done. And I want to encourage the whole church, attend Rema service if you want to grow. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a wild wind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. I'm not going to explain Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry ye, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord live it, and as thy soul live it, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. I will not leave thee. The Bible says the duty of Elisha was just to pour water in the hands of the prophet. He was a servant. Servant wood gives birth to formation. There are so many arrogant people sitting in church. Arrogant. You can't tell them anything. They know too much. In short, you know more than Jesus that say he did not come to be served, but to serve. The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Matthew 20, 28. You don't want to be like Jesus. And let this mind be in you. What made Jesus a servant? And let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. Form of God. Likeness of God. The same class like God. The same level like God. But the Bible says, oh Jesus, are, are you here? Yes. And let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, but refused to be equal with him. Then made himself of no repetition. Then took upon him the form of a self. One, formation. Refused to be equal with your leader. Elisha refused to be equal with Elijah because he receives visions. The fact that you have one or two dreams, that doesn't make you the same with your pastor. Servants are not people that exalt themselves. They allow God to exalt them. Your pastor talk to you, you tell your pastor what you think is right. You are not formed. You are joined, but you still have your own idea. You are in the place of meta, but you are not in the place of morpho. You know too much. He cannot even call you at 12 midnight because he's thinking you are sleeping. You may, maybe you will likely tell him, why did you call me this late? Don't you know I have to rest? Then you are not a servant, you are a boss. Because a servant does not tell his master what to do. But you see, formation, sometimes it comes as if you are receiving pain. Sometimes it comes as if you are being rejected. Sometimes it comes as if you are not being accepted. Sometimes it comes as if you are being denied. The Bible spoke about Elisha. The, 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 Elijah told him, go back. 
rejection. Elijah even acted like, I don't need you. What was that? I'm checking your motive. Why are you following me? Why? Sit down, Pastor Hanno. This post should not let me bubble because I'm trying to keep this shirt for the afternoon. But if I sweat on this shirt, then this service will take long. Trust me. Thank you, Daddy. You see, it is very important that you understand the most difficult part for our Christian work is formation. It's not matter. You can join to anybody. But are you willing to pay the price with a person? You can come to something because it's nice. A guy can come and tell Helen, I love you. But can you contain Helen? Can you contain Helen when you begin to discover some things about Helen? Can you stay? Are you getting this? Now, this is Elisha. So, my question is, watch this. I want to take you somewhere. Go back to that text. I'm trying to hold myself. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said, Tarry here. You told me to follow you. Now you are telling me, leave me alone. If it's this modern day church, which I've gained title for the nonsense, they will speak some high grammar Dutch. They know Dutch and English more than even the pastor. When they start to even speak the grammar in Dutch, you get your head, you begin to think, what are they saying? The Bible says, look at this thing. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to better. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to better. All this was the process of formation. Discouragement. Rejection. Denial. It was all there. It's a test. Whether you will say, you know what? I'm done. Then you are not formed. It is like the potter is trying to form you. Then at some point you say, it's the fail. So the pot will not be completed. And anytime people look at it, they see an ugly thing. Because anytime you try to build a house, you don't finish it. It is like you did not start. So, so now let's continue. Are, are we here? And the sons of the prophet that were at better came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master? It's two things. There were sons and to Elisha, that was his Lord. Hey, oh, you didn't hey. get what I'm saying. Do, do you get what I'm saying? There were sons. But to Elisha, even the sons they know, they call him thy master. So it's not our master, it's your master. Because if somebody has become your master, you are his slave. But you notice, most of the time, slaves are the ones that are formed. They are the ones that are molded. Because they left where they were. They were sold as slavery. They joined themselves. Then they choose to follow the rules. Which one do you follow? That's why demons, sometimes they are chasing you all the time. Because you are joined, but you are not formed. You are not formed. You still have your own agenda. How things must go. I was telling somebody. I said, listen. After you hear a prophetic word, you need a pastor. Sit down. Don't jump with it. I said, you need to see it down. Because the Bible says, they that are planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish. Where are you planted? Are you planted in Kribi? Or are you planted somewhere else? 
Are, are you learning something? Yes, so now watch this. Watch this. Because sometimes, when you are even being formed, you don't know. You don't even know. You don't know that you are being formed. All what you are doing, you are busy seeing the problem. Until when you start to talk to somebody else. Then you notice you were being molded to be a giant. Continue. What did the Bible say? Anita, are you in this room? You sure? I'm just checking whether you are here. Oh, you went somewhere. And yeah, go, yes, continue. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. Jericho! The, the journey continues. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Uh -huh. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away? There is always somebody that will discourage you are forming. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That church, every day you go to church, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Are you not tired? That is brainwashed. Don't you have a life? And you listen to the, to the, to the idiot. Everyday church. Everyday church. Everyday church. Next time, tell the person, everyday work. Everyday work. Everyday work. Everyday work. You go to that, you are work every day. Everyday work. It's so funny that you don't know your work is killing you. And God is the one that breathes life in you. But you still sit and you magnify the job more than being in the house of God. The, 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 the job is even getting you sometimes frustrated, tireless. You are tired. Because what makes you tired is your mind. So the spirit of God must breathe on you. He must breathe on your mind. That's why the Bible says, and thou who keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. It's a scripture, Isaiah 26, verse 3. That means God said, when I breathe on your mind, you will have peace. He said, in me, you will have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. It is written in your book. But the truth is, your mind is too busy to accept that truth. That's why, until when you are about to die, before you give God attention. Yes. Some people love that. When they are about to die. Then they say, you know what? So, now, something forced you. You took a break by force. They call it burnout. Mm -hmm. It's not even burnout. It's burning out everywhere. When you got to that place, then now you start to think, I really need a break. Why must you come there before you think you need a break? And by the way, your job is not an escape to face realities in life. Don't crowd your mind with your job and it makes you not to think further. Life is not only about going to job. There is more to it. Don't you read in the Bible that a man's life is not measured by the abundance of things he has? So God has never qualified your life based on your job. Or the amount of things you try to accumulate. Is somebody getting this? Now look at these people. Now what was, El do you know that in the whole this text, we did not see Elisha prophesy. I'm about to drop the bomb, then we leave this place. He did not also prophesy. We did not even hear that he had a vision. Okay, let me show you something. Myron, stand here. Rodney. 
Somebody said, when did you prepare these notes? They are not in my notes, so check my notes. You will not see any of the thing there. Now I'm just preaching. These are the prophets. So, come. Or what he's doing. He follows Elijah. Follow. So those prophets have been schooled maybe to see visions. But Elijah never schooled him that way. What did Elijah do? Get a bottle of water. Bring me water. Bring me my Bible. Wait for me there. I have an appointment. I'm coming. Can you join me at the door? That was his training. The other ones were in the classroom. You see, to see vision, sometimes you can enter trance and you can have an open vision. But they did not know the one that was being formed was not receiving just instruction, was becoming who the master is. He never had a vision. My Bible didn't say that. And maybe all the time, the prophets are busy saying, put a thing on the pulpit. We are the one that see vision, so they have to tell him that the master is about to go. They are the ones telling Elijah what will happen. Is somebody getting this? So, thank God these are not the prophets. These ones they will follow. But you see, don't be a head knowledge church goer. That your mind is so full of revelation, but you are not being formed. You, you can even quote every scripture. Matthew chapter 1, you quote. Chapter 2, you quote. Chapter 3, you quote. You even sing it like a song. But the only thing is you preach what you don't live. Yes. You talk about what you don't practice. So, when you open your mouth, people will be thinking you are there. But the truth is, before God, you are nothing. Jesus said, why do you call me master? When you don't do what I ask you to do. Because God is more interested about your forming more than just joining. What is your added value in joining anything when you are not changing? Why do you say you belong to Winner Service Worship Center when they see you, they cannot even see a, the character of Christ? They can't even see, listen, they can't even hear you talk. They say, hey, it is like I'm talking to pastor. The Bible says, follow me as I follow Christ. Jesus said, I do what I see my father do. It was in the doing that he was formed. It was in the doing that it was formed. The question is, when you sit in church every day, what do you do? What do you really do? Are you this kind of a church goer that takes instruction from everybody outside except your pastor in the house? So look at this thing. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, master, master, my owner, my owner, and do not the things which I say. And this is what I tell women that are married. You, it was better you don't marry because your husband is like your master. Yes, you can get angry with me. I just said it. I know the told you husband, so he's your mate. He's not your mate. He's your master. Yes, that's what Bible says. You can go and rip that page out of the Bible. It's Bible. And I'd rather follow the Bible than follow you. Is somebody getting this? It is important. Are you formed? 
Do you want to be formed? Because that is what, you see, the prophets were the ones that were scared. Elisha was not scared. He was constantly with the master. No text showed he had a vision or had a dream. Or was telling his master, last night I had a dream. Let's read it. Anita, read it for us. But I pray for you all. That you come to a place in life. That you will allow yourself to be formed. That you will not be church goers. You will not be some of these people that go to church and they choose to stay the same. I pray that that spirit that makes people, that spirit, that the spirit of the Lord that brings about transformation will come on you. I pray for everybody in this church that may you in your personal life start to experience change. Change. Yeah. Whereby you will testify. When people see you, let them talk about the change. Let them talk about it. Let them talk about it. I rather have people that when they see me, they say they have met Jesus. Than then they see me, they keep talking about Jean Pierre. I pray that we will not just be people that go to church, but yet they can see the life of Christ manifesting through us. That is why it is still very difficult for the world, worldly people, to give their heart. Because when they look at you, they don't see anything. But after today, after today, let a new grace come on you. A new anointing come on you. Because this change is by the Spirit. The Bible says it's by the Spirit. Yes. It's by the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Let this be the water of transformation. Water of transformation. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Oh, Jesus. Somebody help her. Help that lady. Help her. Thank you, Jesus. By the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. Jesus Christ. It's by the Spirit. I've told people, whenever I see somebody change, it is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. By the Spirit. Oh, Jesus. By the Spirit. Is by the Spirit. Change is by the Spirit. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord has made me, and the bread of the Almighty is giving me life by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Change. It comes by the Spirit. Power. Change by the Spirit. By the Spirit, Holy Ghost. Hey, Jesus! By the Spirit, take it. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. I used to wonder. I said, Why? Why don't we change? Then I hear something. We don't change, not because we don't have to change. We don't allow the Spirit. Oh, Jesus. Somebody help that sister. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Stand for me, sir. Besides doing what to do, you are a minister of the gospel. Power! Let him go. Power! Let him go. By the spirit. It's by the spirit. It's by the spirit. By the 
God's grace. Watch this. I have concluded one thing. When people don't change, it's a choice. Listen. I don't care how many people around me are prophesying before me. I will show you something that I was trying to tell my wife. I'll close this message soon. I don't really care. I don't. Because Elisha was not prophesying. Yes. He said more than 17 years we did not hear him had a ministry. His duty was to pour water. May he make you a May he make you a You see, that was his duty. But you see, our problem is we have 10 ministry that until you stand behind the pulpit, you are not called. You are not called. Who told you you are not called? Who told you? Who told you? Who told you? Oh, Jesus. Who told you? Power. Who told you? Watch this. Watch this. Let me tell you something. Sit down a bit. Let me try to finish this message. Sit down. Give me the thing. I've told you, he will use you. He will use you. I hear the word, I will pour water on him that is thirsty. Now watch this. Let me talk to you a little bit. I'm about to finish this message. What was he doing? What was he doing? He was doing what? He was doing what? So, service brings formation. Service brings formation. If you were young, you were fornicating. You were doing a service to the devil. That's why fornication becomes your lifestyle. Yes. You didn't do it once. You did it a second time. Some people are so addicted to strange things that they can't do without their food. They must watch all kinds of strange things on their phone. It's because the phone has formed you. Yes. What you don't know, you were serving your phone. I'm about to close. And tomorrow, next week, I will still be here in another dimension. Service. Service is so rather unfortunate that believers, they don't understand. You failing to do your job affects everybody in the house. Watch this. That will be in the afternoon. Have you got up in the morning? You have children. Then you just find out that the living room was not in order. Now, you were not supposed to do that job. But because they didn't do it, it disturbed you, disturbed your peace, and now you are doing something that somebody wasn't supposed to do. Somebody was supposed to do. Elisha understood service. The other prophets understood anointing. Let me come and receive. Receive it. Here we are. So, when the prophet was praying for people, sometimes he did not even lay hands on him. Oh, what he is doing? He's serving. 
Sir, what do you need? You are sweating. He's wiping his sweat. Sir, what do you need? You need food. Just wait here. I'm going to town. While he's going to town, people are enjoying the service. They are enjoying the service. Watch this. I have, a, I have a secret in my life. I respect people's offices so much. I just came right now with Prophet Ajima. You will see the way I behave. Though he call me brother, my in-law, but don't get that twisted with who he is as a person. Watch, I'm carrying his back. Yesterday in the service, he said, my brother, pick the oil. Sometimes your heart is only drawn to where your spirit is. Simple. It's not like there were no other people there. Because it's not like also I came there to pick oil. But that is where his heart is. Service. So watch this. Stand. Elisha, um, I'm going to Rotterdam, but I want you to join me in two minutes. Yes, sir. I know you have a service, but join me there. Yes, sir. I'm coming. All this time, Elisha never came to tell Elijah. I had a vision. Me too, I'm anointed. Now watch the mystery. Are we here? Yes, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I'm about to close. Are you sure? Yes, Can you handle this? Okay, let's go somewhere. Anita, read it for us. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master? Forget about all these jokers. Continue. From thy, and Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul live, liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. They too went on. The journey changed from following into walking together. Formation change you from following into walking together. You start to walk side by side with your master. That means at that point, there is no difference. Your master's step is your step. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You are not getting what I'm saying. You see, we, we, we have a concept about Christianity, we think things just happen. No. They don't. Don't go look for somebody. You admire the person and you say, I want to be like the person. Stop saying that nonsense. The fact that you said it, it will not happen. Yes. I don't even care also how, how many times you watch the person. It doesn't work like that. Why do you think many people quit when it comes to forming? Why? That word forming means fashion. And the fashioning is not according to your dream. It's according to his dream. Oh, you didn't get me. That means you have your own dream. Stand. Wives fit in your husband's plans. That is hard work. I know you read it. You, you, you just think you read some. Do you know what it means to fit in? You would in person. That means if that thing is crooked, you too must be crooked to fit. 
That means your vision must be swallowed up by his. They call it fashioning. That is tough, brother. And that is why they say, many are caught, but few are chosen. So stop admiring people. I say, one day I will be Jean-Pierre. Do you know how I slept today? Do you ever know when I went to bed? It's a question. Now look at this thing. Are we here? Continue. 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 Let me hit something. Continue. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by They are Jordan. watching, you, but they are not changing. They are watching, but they are not changing. They are watching, but they are not making the connection. They are with somebody, but they are not with the person. And we have many people like that. They don't even know when you are dealing with serious issue that they themselves can call you to say, what is going on? But trust me, by his grace, all of you in this church, I can know in my room what is going on in your life by his grace. Let me tell you, the fact that I may not tell you, that doesn't mean that I don't know. Yes. Sometimes you even mess up last night. I know. Then the next day I'm giving you love. Sometimes I saw you in your room talking bad about the pastor. You are the first person that I hawked in the morning. Look at this thing. Fifty men of the sons of the went and stood and viewed afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. Say formation. So these ones are watching one, how one person is being formed. They are watching somebody's process, but they don't want to go into their process. They are watching. The question is, how many of those kind of people do we have in life like this? That love to watch people's process and they praise the people. They talk about the people, but they themselves don't want to go through it. Listen, you came here to be formed. Paul said, my little children whom I travel in bed, that Christ may be formed in you. You are not just here to join. You are here to be formed. Look at this thing. Why should Sunday, should I make appointment on Sunday? To go where? It's the last day that I made appointment. Sunday? No. Anything that I must, it's not because I become a pastor. This is an old thing in my 20s. I made up my mind. I'm going to church on Sunday. If that service is the whole day, I'm sitting down. Because let me tell you, you don't know which time and when God will talk to you. But you are making appointment on Sunday. The only people that are breaking protocol, but Jewish people don't do it. I have my friend in Bautafel that David, David does not open his store on Sunday. He's a friend. He's the one that supplies. Are you supposed to buy the juice from his store? The, 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 who is buying the thing? I have bigger. Where are you buying the thing? Yombo. Now go back to David. Forgot about Jumbo. Go back to David. He's a good guy. Is somebody getting this? Look at this thing. Continue, continue. I must hit something today. Continue. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, uh -huh. so, that they too, so that they too went over on dry ground. Because something is about to fall. Continue. And it came to pass, 
when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from Remember, thee. they start to walk together. Then the other one is saying, Ask. Watch this. Yes. And Elisha before said, Before I be taken, he start to reveal what is about to happen to him, to the servant. So the servant stopped becoming a servant. Now, Elijah start to see him as my representative. But watch this. Something is about to happen. Watch this whole thing. Continue. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion. He did not say these things until when he discovered this guy is formed. Mm. Hey. There are many things your pastor will never tell you because you still have a kind of a baby mentality to when he sees formation. It is information that your pastor can tell you, I'm feeling pain. He knows you can carry it. That your pastor can tell you, I need money. He knows you can carry it. Your pastor can go to babies because he get them confused. They are not formed. People that are formed are people that sometimes can leave their homes. They already know they are offering. Yes. Yes. They already know, God has called me to take care of this. I have done that not once. That I only go and whisper. That thing is taken care of. Can we continue the service? I've done that. In short, let me not even go there. I don't want to talk about times. That thing, and I'm telling the person, when I was in my room, the Lord told me to settle this thing. So, can we forget this and continue? It is babies that are not formed that need to be told about everything. Are you getting this? Now watch this. Continue. I pray thee. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not... It shall not be so. Continue. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. He, he went up. But Elisha saw. That means... People that are formed are focused. Focus. All this distraction that you get, my job distracts you, you are this distract you, you don't even know, oh my God. You see, one day I was in my room. And then the Lord said to me, You see that burden of so so and so? You have it. Settle it. Then I said, Okay, we can do it through bank transfer. I said, No. Buy your plane ticket. I said, no, I have something to do. He said, no, I just told you to buy your plane ticket. I appear there. You are not invited. Set to the thing and move. We have done some mad things. And the person was sitting on his chair when this thing was presented. Like this. And when I said it, the person didn't say anything. The person just said, bless you. But the person understood. When you are formed, your attitude is different from somebody that is not. You are not afraid to pay the price. You are not. This is not a common message. Listen to me. Look at this whole thing. Something is happening. And what happened? And Elisha saw it. He moved with a wild wind. The wild wind took him. Us, the chariots took him right. But do you know, he did not release his mantle. Mm. Ah. Well, you didn't get what I'm saying. It's people are still sitting down. Elijah did not release the mantle. He went with it. But you see, he was not a custodian of the mantle. It was given. 
So God took the mantle and put it on the one that is formed. Mantles fall on people that are formed. It doesn't fall on everybody. I know you have been in church, but it doesn't, I don't care who deceive you. And I don't also care when people say, we know who will be next. Listen, this thing that I'm talking about, it is the spirit of God coming upon people and make you to flow in a realm you never flew before. Now, watch this whole thing, watch this whole thing. The Bible says, Elisha never prophesied. Elisha did not see a dream. Elisha did not see a vision. The moment the mantle fell, there was a double portion. Somebody lift up your hands. Hey, hey, he is in the room. He is in the room. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. The power to become. Take it. Jesus. Jesus. Power to become. Power to become. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Life is a choice. <laughs> Life is a choice. When God wants to form you, He touches you. But when God notices you are formed, He doesn't only touch you, He comes upon and stays. Listen to me. You are in this room. And you say, Well, I went to church. But it's like I'm not changing. Something is coming upon you right where you are standing. Lift up your hands. Something is coming upon you. Something is coming upon you. Something is coming on you. Ah, Shasoka. Laba Habadia Zadakai. Receive it. Receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Woman of God, receive it. Receive it. We want to change. We want to impact our well. But impacting your well is a lot of job. Listen. The reason why Elisha was different from Naaman, I mean Gehazi, he was formed. When Gehazi joined him, he could not even train Gehazi. Gehazi was looking at his money and refused to be formed. Oh, Jesus. May you be formed. Power! Jesus. Formation. These things, they are by the Spirit. It is the Spirit that quickens it. When we say these things to people, people think you are, you are making them. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Nobody is making you. I don't want to share you experiences. But you see, this thing that you see shall be like this. I used to serve men of God until my mouth would go. Sometimes you don't, you don't even know. Jesus Christ. You don't even know what is going on. I will stay in church. I will be the first, the last. I will clean. Men of God will come to town. Jean-Pierre will stay the whole day. will not eat. Privilege to move to be around Archbishop Nicholas Duncan William to carry his Bible. Privilege. Let me tell you, it was a sacrifice. 
Sometimes my family come with me to church. They go home at 6. I tell them, go. I will show home. I will come home at 10 in the night, 11. I will stay back and clean the whole church. Clean toilets. I literally didn't have my own way to decide my course, like how this generation have. The Evan tell pastor, when pastor will have an appointment with you, you say, no, I have something else to do. You are not ready, my friend. You are a joker. You are a joker because you don't know who tells you to wait. You are not ready. I tell you, I'm coming to you. You tell me you have another appointment. I say, grow up. Do you think it's my decision to come to you? Do you know who is coming to you? Where are the servants? Where are they? Where are the servants in church? Lift up your hands. Young girls, you, you born again. We we'll lead them to Christ. Lift up your hands. Oh, Spirit of God, breathe on them. Let your presence come upon them. Let it be change. Oh, that is it. Take it, Holy Ghost. 